Hello and welcome to this week's lab. So this week, we will learn that how we can connect GPS points data by using our uh, cell phones, and also how we can view those connected GPS points uh, in ArcGIS Pro. So there are multiple tools that uh, nowadays are available to connect GPS points on your cell phones. The one that I'm using is called OSNN which is a free app that you can download on your Android uh, phones or iPhones or the other uh, type of devices. And I also have a very short video, which I will put a link in, uh, in this video's description, that you can follow this video to download the OSM at AMP, uh, OSM and app and then connect your own GPS points. All you can use in this demo dataset, which is on my GitHub. Uh, I also will put the URL in the video description, uh, where you can see that I have uh, provided the data that I collected uh, several years ago by using the OSM and app. Uh, so since we are here, so let's just look at the structure of the data. So uh, basically it's following the structure of the XML uh, file where we can see this the GPX data and uh, connect by using OSM and, uh, and app. And so this is the one track which contains multiple segments. And for each segment, and we have multiple points. So for example, for the first second segment, we have this point and we have the second point and we have the third point, third point and Etc. and other points. And for each single point, uh, we have the latitude, uh, longitude. Uh, we also have the elevation. And remember that for GPS points, the accuracy of the elevation normal is lower than the latitude and longitude. Uh, we also have the time that when um, that point was captured. And we also have this HDOP um, variable. So normally this measures the quality of the data. So basically the lower, the better. And for some points, uh, we also have the speed that are calculated uh, uh, in this data set. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and also open ArcGIS Pro. And so for this uh, week's lab, so we are going to start a map project. So as we did earlier, so let's um, call it lab three, and also we save our project in our OneDrive folder. So uh, let's go ahead and I'll find out the OneDrive folder, which normally is in the username folder. And I'm going to save that to my uh, Geo215 demo folder. All right, uh, so it will take a few seconds that uh, to have the data being loaded. And, and now let's go to check the data that we're going to use. So remember that uh, the data I, down I downloaded from uh, GitHub. So if you go to, go to my GitHub, and if you want to use my data, or you can use OSM to connect your data. So you can just click download if you want to use uh, my data. And by default, when we download it from GitHub, um, the data will be in our uh, downloads folder. So you can see here, this is the data that I downloaded. And now we go to uh, ArcGIS Pro. Uh, so because it is an, a GPX file, so in ArcGIS Pro, so we cannot view the data directly. So we need to convert that GPX file uh, to a vector data set that can be recognized by ArcGIS Pro. So the data set, that tool is called GPX to features. So let's go to map, oh sorry, let's go to analysis, uh, where we can see we have this toolbox uh, of two processing tools. So those are the tools for the back data. Uh, let's open that uh, window and here, uh, we can just find out the tool. So normally we just type uh, the name to search for that tool. So it is called GPX 
two uh, features. And now you can see it's already the first one, so GPX two features. So let's uh, click that tool. So we open this tool. And then we need to provide the out, the input file, which is and uh, should be a GPX file. So let's open the folder. And uh, because I downloaded my file in my downloads folder, so I go to my downloads folder. Okay, so it's in my username folder, and I go to my downloads folder, and I here this is my GPX file, so I click OK. And then it will give uh, you an output feature class name. So uh, you can use a default one, or you can change the name um, uh, to a different name. Uh, so, but I will keep using the default one, and I will also keep that output as points. Uh, so now I will go, go ahead and also run this tool. Uh, so because I don't have too many points, so you can see uh, it's very fast. So now you can see uh, we zoom to the uh, to the points where we can see those points. So those are the collected uh, GPS points. Um, all right, and so and also we can see that it's uh, uh, we have a new layer. So those are the uh, the layer of the GPS points. And we can see not all the points are captured accurately. So for example, we have those points that uh, looks like those are on top of the building. And so that high, that is highly likely that uh, some points are not accurate because I was walking um, uh, around, I was walking around this uh, very high building. So it may block the signals. So some points, the accuracy is not very high. All right, and once we have those points that saved in our uh, project, so if we go to the catalog, and if we go to the databases, uh, so we have a database in this folder, so that is a project database. So by default, all the data that we created, by default, will be saved into this uh, database, this uh, project database. So if I expand, and now I can see the uh, we have the new data that is uh, uh, the point that we just converted uh, from the GPX file. Um, all right, so now let's right click the layer of this uh, GPS points and let's look at the properties and then let's see, uh, go to the source. And we can see that by default, if you go to the speed reference, so by default, ArcGIS Pro just give it a uh, GCS, um, that is WGS 1984, uh, which is because uh, those points are contain the latitude and longitude. So ArcGIS Pro just give a uh, GCS. Uh, it does not give it uh, a PCS or the project coordination system. So uh, we know that the best practice is always to define a PCS. Uh, so let's go ahead and also define the PCS. So let's cancel and close the property window. And let's again, let's go to tools. Uh, so here we can find out the tool that is going to define the PCS. Uh, the name is called project. So, so you can see project, we are project spatial data from one coordination system to another. So let's open that tool. Uh, so now again, we can provide input data. So uh, if you click this drop down list, uh, you can see that our existing GPS points are here. So let's just go ahead and use that one. And also the output. So you can see uh, ArcGIS Pro again gave us a default um, output name, so you can keep using that default name. And now, since we're going to give it a new PCS, uh, so ArcGIS Pro is asking, okay, so what is the output coordinate system? So let's click this globe icon, and we're going to select a PCS that for um, our data set. So we're going to choose a projected coordinate system, where you can see we have a lot of 
uh, options. Uh, so as we said uh, during the lecture, so uh, the two of the most popular system that I'm using, one is the state plane system, so that if your data is uh, within the United States, and you can choose that one, or you can use the UTM. Okay, so uh, for today's uh, class, uh, so you can choose either of them, so either state plane or UTM, since uh, my uh, GPS points are collected in Virginia. Uh, Harrisonburg, Virginia, so uh, I can choose each of them. Uh, so let's say I want to use the state plan. Uh, and I'm going to use, uh, uh, let's say I'm going to use NAD 1983 meters. So I expand that folder. And I'm going to choose the Virginia. So I'll go down and also find out the Virginia, a uh, state plan for Virginia. And we can say for Virginia, we have the Virginia North and the Virginia South. Uh, so because Harrisonburg is in the North part, so I will choose Virginia North and I will click OK. OK, so now you can see we're going to uh, define the new PCS, which is state plan Virginia North. Again, that is really because uh, my GPS points is located in, in Virginia. Uh, if your data is collected in a different location, you may choose UTM or you may choose a different state plan uh, system. All right, so now let's just run it. And again, this will be super fast. So now we can see we have uh, another layer that on top of our uh, existing layer, so which this one is projected. Uh, so if we go ahead and I'll check the properties, and uh, if you go to source and also spatial reference and now we can see for this data set we do have the pcs which is the one that we defined uh, earlier all right so let's remove this unprojected system and again so if you are curious and uh, you can go ahead and also go to catalog and now you can see we have our second data which is a projected gps points now in our uh, project database. All right, uh, so now let's go ahead and also check the attribute table. So because uh, it is a vector data set, uh, so it, uh, it has an attribute table. So we can see we have the, the shapes and also type. And we also have the elevation information and also we have a date time. So when we convert the GPX file uh, into the, uh, the vector data, we also uh, recorded the date time that uh, those points were collected. Mm -hmm. So if you recall that uh, in the original date file, in the GPX file, so we have the date time that those points were collected. And once after we converted the files into ArcGIS Pro, we also have this date time, uh, which means that we are able to uh, filter those points by using the time. So to do that, let's right click uh, the properties of this, uh, uh, the, the GPS points, and then let's go to time. Okay, so time. Uh, and then we see that uh, our layer, um, we can filter based on attribute values because uh, in our attribute table, we do have one column that contains the date time. So we choose this section. And you can see by default, ArcGIS Pro is able to identify that field, that is date time. And uh, looks like they also is able to recognize that one in the right format. So uh, that's great, and we can leave everything as default, and then we click OK. Okay. Uh, so once we enable the time, or we uh, in, see that filter the uh, the point based on time, uh, we will be able to see this time bar. Okay, and if you click run, and now you can see that uh, the points uh, we are now viewing the point at a different time period. 
So you can see that the direction that so I was walking along around uh, my, our building and then stop there. Okay, so we are able to view those points um, at different time period. Uh, we also have this time uh, tool. So where if you open that and you are able to uh, change the start time, the end time, and also speed, etc. Uh, to build those points. All right, uh, so if you want to disable the time, so you can just simply click uh, this button so that will disable time. All right, and our final step is that, so we know that those GPS points also contain um, the elevation data. So uh, it would be nice that if, if we can build those points in 3D. So in ArcGIS Pro, so it's very easy to do that. Uh, so if we go to the, the view and we can convert um, this 2D map into a 3D map, uh, because we are looking at the points at a larger scale. So let's see here uh, around a single building. So we can view those points or convert that into a local scene. Okay, so now we are converting uh, the map. And if you also expand the maps in the catalog, so now you can see we have two maps. Um, the first one is a map that is a, a 2D map, and the second one is a 3D map. All right, uh, so let's zoom out, and you can see we have all the points. Remember that if you cannot see all the points, you can go to time and also disable the time. Then you will be able to see all the points. And so as we did, in the previous lab, so let's uh, click this middle ring so we can see that in a 3D. Um, so you can see some points uh, disappear. So if you want to see all the points, uh, so you may want to uncheck some of those layers. Okay, and now you are able to see all the points. Okay. So that is uh, to view those uh, GPS points in 3D.